Los! Got it. Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flare Mouse. I was sent some really nice 300 blackout bullets made by Lehigh Defense recently. This is a 194 grain maximum expansion subsonic 300 blackout bullet. Lehigh Defense just recently redesigned this bullet. It is improved, it is enhanced. It comes in at a little better price point now. It is much more accurate and you can see the large expansion is very, very effective on taking hogs and deer and also a top self-defense projectile at subsonic velocities. It just doesn't get any better than this. The problem is, I don't know anyone who loads 300 blackout. So what the heck am I going to do with these really nice bullets that they sent me? After some thought, I decided to try to design a 300 blackout 12 gauge slug. I had just a handful of these 69 caliber lead kind of Diablo shaped pellet slugs and I decided to use these to mount the 300 blackout bullets in. I bored a hole 27 thousandths of an inch smaller than the diameter of the bullet through the pellet. I then pressed the bullet into the base of the pellet using several tons of pressure. I was pretty confident this would keep the two pieces held together. Originally I was going to make this design completely lead free using these zinc pellets from Techrim, which is a Russian company. I bored the hole, pressed the bullet in, and, well, it caused the pellet to split like a log. But this really illustrates how tight of a fit I got in the lead pellets. Since we're using a Sabo and there's not a lot of contact area with that Sabo, I decided to enhance the traction using knurling. And this was simply done by pressing the pellet firmly down, not just with my finger, but rolling it across the file to form those uh, kind of treads. We'll use an FS12 gas seal, which is nice and short, and a couple fiber wads on top of that to kind of support everything. And then we'll stack our slug assembly on top of that. And around the assembly, we have our Sabo system. This was all stuffed into a three inch hole and uses 35 grains of long shot powder. Well, let's head out to the test range and see if I got this right or completely screwed things up. Welcome back to Later, folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you today feeling very, very, very tactical. I don't know if you can tell how tactical we are, but look at all of our tactical patches. That's pretty tactical. And today we are shooting what Jeff has designed and called the 300 Faust or the Dry 100 Faust. And uh, it's essentially a 300 blackout bullet that has been mounted into a Diabolo slug. So you've got two, two, uh, two rounds in one there. We're going to put them first through a smooth bore and uh, just to see if they'll spin, if they got any accuracy with them. And then we're going to try them through the old. Wait, rifle how's barrel. a smooth bore going to make it spin, Greg? Well, there is no spin. Oh, okay. Lot, if I see turn, if they're, if they're stable or not. Well, if I shoot, but I spin it. Oh, that does time. work. Yeah, right, you're really works. fast. It's just science, Jeff. Yeah, okay. I believe in science. So we're going to shoot them through the smooth board, then we're going to send them through the rifled barrel. So we've got uh, 16 inches of actual rifle goodness. That's and more than 16. Los! Oh my god. 1621. Friggin' thump. Yeah, I warned you. Woo! Los! Oh my god. All right, so it's taken us a minute off camera, but we just now got to the big giant lead projectile that mushroomed out like a salad bowl in there. We yeah, found if that, if that 1600 was right, that, and I don't know if that's right or not. We'll have 1621 to on there on your crony, something like that. That's this, very fast. This was the uh, little wad we found below. However, this was stuck to the back of this. This thing has a hole through the center of it. Yeah, from the from the bullet. Yeah, the bullet came. The inertia drove it out of the back, apparently. Seems like it's just about 300 it's, caliber. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. So, Jeff is telling me on the high-speed camera, though, that the bullet separated from the slug. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Can, slug still stayed pretty true. It hit nose first. The bullet came apart and evidently struck him in the neck. So, I guess you are, yeah. you are getting two for one on this one. <laughs> In case you missed his heart. This Let's one, see if my if it continues to fail or or not. Check this out. It was actually fairly accurate. Oh yeah, look at that. The slug portion at least. It all starts out looking really promising with our slug traveling along, flying along pretty stable and accurately, almost hitting exactly where 
Greg was aiming at, but here comes our 300 blackout bullet lagging behind. Sometimes I wish I could make the high-speed camera lie, but we just can't do that. First shot, utter failure. We have a Remington 870 with a 20-inch fully rifled barrel. Let's see if this doesn't stabilize them or spin them or keep the bullet. some kind of magic. Some kind of magic that keeps the 300 blackout stuck into the Diablo. Yeah. Hopefully that first one was a fluke. These I'm gonna are aim for that little prototypes, green heart. you know, that's stuff like that happens. Yep, flukes happen. Okay, I am ready. Alright, I'm gonna aim for the little green heart. Los! Here we go. God, that thing's got some snap to it. <laughs> God. It's not even an opinion. We saw that the slug hit here next to the green heart, the Gruno Hertz. And over here, we have a pretty clear impression of dang bullet. And Jeff just found all the way back here, what are we, 15, 20 yards away? Yeah. All the way back here, laying at our feet, was a 30 caliber round. Look how big that, that's a, that thing's an inch and a half long. Yeah, it's like a pencil. Yeah. Right, dog? Dig this or something. <laughs> Shut up! Don't get us started. Look at all the little gas check work on there. Yeah. But yeah, that thing came out, uh, it evidently came apart in the barrel, it flew two separate pieces. All I can say is some days the tests go great, other days we got this going on. Another failure, sorry. Okay, the world famous wet magazine. <laughs> wet magazines, I'm gonna try to put it just in that little rectangle in between the tape okay. and the center. This is a Don Harrell yeah. favorite. Is that his name? Paul Harrell. Don Harrell production. Yes. Produced by, filmed by, <laughs> edited by. <laughs> Paul Farrell. Yep. All right. When you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Wow. I think we got penetration. There was dirt in the back. Here we go. Wow. Okay, what happened? Well, I don't know if you can tell this, Jeff, but the slug hit the stack of wet magazines. And folks, this is a thick stack of wet magazines. That is some mass and some weight for that slug to have plowed all the way through. Look at that. That is the exit hole, as they say, in the exit hole business. <laughs> and we saw a puff of dirt back there on the safety field um, where that round landed, but God dang it, look at that. And then Jeff just found here, the bullet separated, stuck together consistently about- At least at least it's, it's consistent, huh? Yeah. Consistently bad. Consistently about four or five inches off to the side, one side or the other, <laughs> but zipped along the side of the magazines here skipped out to the side so but good lord look at that oh wow i'd give you the finger wiggle but i'd need fingers about that long <laughs> there you go all right that'll make him happy that'll make him happy <laughs> that's what she people said. are into that for some reason <laughs> all right so impressive performance by the diavolo eh, the little 300 caliber bullet who skips away from his bigger brother <laughs> at the at the mall not so impressive at least in this shot the pellet itself was stable flying after being spun up by the rifled barrel. But once again, we have that bullet separation. And let me try to explain what's going on and how I kind of screwed up big time. We have this big heavy assembly all supported by a fiber wad and a gas seal. And as we rapidly accelerate this thing to supersonic speeds, the heavy bullet kind of doesn't want to move. It, it doesn't have enough support so it just is driven out the back through the fiber wad and gas seal. We are gonna introduce the new and improved uh, Plant Stand 2.0. This just freshly came out of Mrs. OG's front yard. And we have today with us what we in the US call purple cabbage, but in the UK they call this the aubergine. Okay, still using rifling, still accurate. Still accurate, the Diablo at least. Yeah. We're gonna to try to put it right in the center of that sweaty carrot, or whatever you called it, <laughs> and uh, see if we can't make an explosion. Okay, uh, los! Here we go!
All right, for this test, we're going to fire into three jugs of color altered water into the high tech Kevlar backstop. We've numbered the jugs one through three, or three to one if the bullet was going backwards. All right, Los! Hello! Wow! And the table survived. Not bad. Jug number three took it in the shorts. Wow! So I found the uh, Diablo slug down there in the mud in the back. Okay, let me zoom in on that real quick. Focus. Oh you want me to bring it to you? I don't know. All right. Gosh. Then, so the slug hit a little low. We can see here in the initial impact where there was a little bit of a keyholing again on the thing. It was flying really funky. Yeah, look at that though. Keyhole sideways. So then we move over to jug number two, which I conveniently labeled with a number two. That helps. <laughs> slug. There's a little shrapnel coming through with it, but look at this up here. That, what is that? That 300 blackout round was already spinning and zipping off to the top. Uh -huh. Impacted jug number two, exiting out the back sideways, staying sideways the whole time. Jug number three, Diablo slug, the little shard stopped somewhere in number two. There is projectile, or the uh, 300 blackout. So, that is my scientific prediction. Somewhere in all of this ethnically- Yeah, I see a water. dent on the back from the 300 blackout. Yeah, so look at that. There it is. We, gotta, we can reuse it. We got a little. We can reuse it. We got a little piece of the slug as well. But there's the round. Okay. Bueno, as they say in Canada. <laughs> Very disappointing design. I don't know who the idiot well, is designed it. Just need a little glue or something. Glue. Glue, Velcro, maybe some duct tape. Super glue works on everything. If you had strapped this down, you know it would have worked. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have one more of these dogs. Let's, All right. Let's find something, to, something shoot. to shoot it into. All right, here comes our funky flying slug. Watch how the flimsy card table, made out of like eighth inch particle board, bows out from all that pressure. And sadly, that may be the most remarkable part of this test, the fact that table did not just blow out the bottom. I really wanted to destroy that table and finally throw it away because it was like a breeding ground for black widows. The final target. We're sending up a Hitachi Desk Star. We got this out of a laptop that was found in a trash can in Washington, D.C. So we are going to put it on a brick, a high-tech 2.0 brick. I, I trust we can hit this with both projectiles, but let's see what the 300 spinning a blackout round does. Los! Got it. The gun just wants to jump out of my hand. Got it. The only saving grace here is the lead pellets were still pretty darn accurate. And hopefully in the near future we'll come up with another design to utilize these 300 blackout bullets so we can finally do a proper test. I think the fix for this is very simple. It's not super glue or anything like that, but using a heavy metallic disc underneath the slug to properly support it. I think that's all it would take. You hit it. That's all that matters, right? Barely. Where were you aiming? Just right in the center of it? Right in the center. Oh, okay. So it's not that far off. So we uh, noticed that it knocked some of the crack horse secrets out of the top corner, but we don't have a projectile. We don't have a 300 blackout strike on this one. Yeah, it, it fell out again. Did it fly over the target or what something? What a disappointment. I hate when tests go so bad like that. All right, Disappoint we're used to disappointing people both here on the show <laughs> and back at home. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, still fun. Even disappointing rounds are still fun to watch and uh, learn from. So now you know to Velcro tape, tie, or glue the 300 blackout round into the Diablo. A set screw, a set screw would probably work. Set screw? Yeah. <laughs> or some of that, uh, some of that Gorilla Glue or something. Yeah, yeah. We'll get some good suggestions. <laughs> wrap anyway, it a whole thing with fiberglass or something. Right. You know. Put a tarp under it, strap tarp, it down. Yeah. Should have used AA batteries. I know. <laughs> anyway, we had fun shooting it, so that's always a good time. So we appreciate you guys stopping by to watch it. Hopefully you liked it. Reach down here and give a thumbs up, or if you didn't like it, give two thumbs ups. And uh, that's about it. That's all we got for you. We don't want to disappoint you too much here. <laughs> so appreciate you stopping by. We'll catch you on the next video. If you're super bored, Go check out OG's Danger Show. That's a that's a boring time. <laughs>